one of the things about this Premier League season, which has been sensational really, is the fact that you can never predict what is going to happen on any given weekend. At one stage, Tottenham were out and out favourites to finish in the top three of the Premier League, let alone the top four. They're now struggling to finish in those Champions League positions. It's a major priority for Harry Redknapp, especially now that they're out of the FA Cup, they've got nothing else to play for. Not going to be easy for them because QPR at home in the big games tend to perform better, especially at Loftus Road. Saw them last week against West Bromwich Albion and away from home, they're, they're not as spicy. They just don't seem to have the edge that they have when they're at home in front of their home crowd, which is a very noisy, cacophonous atmosphere. When they play the top teams, they always seem to raise their game. They're, they're in a little bit of trouble because Bolton have two games in hand over them at the moment and Wigan of course have started to find their best form of the season. Uh, they'll be pretty positive about uh, avoiding Blackburn Rovers overhauling them and I suppose they'll be crossing their fingers that Aston Villa drop further points. Well Tottenham have uh, been struggling with their formation and struggling for confidence. Speaking to Cop Scott Parker after the game on Sunday uh, he was very down and he said that we've got to use this as motivation to try and get something for this season, to make sure that we get that top four now. Tottenham's big issue is getting the final ball into the box of the strikers. They haven't scored enough goals recently, Andy Bayor and Sahar haven't fired. Uh, Aaron Lennon I thought did reasonably well in the first 20 minutes against Chelsea, but every time he'd get into the penalty area he seemed to choose the wrong pass option. So the key is shutting down the supply lines to the strikers, if they can do that then probably QPR will have a, a, a reasonably easier afternoon. As far as um, QPR are concerned, if Tottenham want to shut them out, then they have to shut down the two strikers, Gibral Cissé and Bobby Zamora. Zamora is great at holding the ball up with his back to goal. And if he's got someone who can feed off him, like Gibral Cissé, something they didn't have last week against West Bromwich Albion, then there's always a chance that they're going to score goals. I think the door to the title race is still open, but it's only slightly ajar. Manchester United dropped points against Wigan. I don't expect them to drop points again. They didn't against Aston Villa on Sunday, and they won't this weekend against Everton. This is the toughest game of their three home matches until the end of the season, and I believe that they'll end up winning those three matches, and that will be enough to get them the title. If they do take all three points on Saturday, boy does it set up the game at the Etihad on April the 30th. Manchester United have started games slowly. They needed a helping hand from the referee in their last two home matches. But when Paul Scholes plays, they're a completely different team. The ball moves faster, more chances are created, and when you've got Javier Hernandez, Danny Welbeck, and Wayne Rooney on your side, you're always going to score goals. Carlos Tevez has fallen back in love with Manchester City. City have fallen back in love with him. There's a love affair going on between him and Sergio Aguero. The connection is fantastic. They move brilliantly together and they've scored a hatful of goals in the last two matches. I think they've scored 10. I totally believe that if Carlos Tevez and Sergio Aguero had spent the year together, then Manchester City would probably have been unstoppable. Don't get me wrong, I think they were, were brilliant without Carlos Tevez for the majority of the season. But when they got caught in a sticky patch in January and February, they needed a different dimension, they needed something different, they needed a, a little bit of ingenuity, some clever finishing on the edge of the penalty area, which they didn't have, a way to unlock the door. When Silva went missing because he had a bit of an ankle knot, when Yaya Toure was at the African Cup of Nations, they needed that different dimension which Carlos Tevez has now provided. Well, it's a crucial game for both Chelsea and for Arsenal. Arsenal after their defeat to Wigan at the early part of the week. It was a game that I think many people thought that Arsenal would, in their current form, win. But Wigan have been playing so well, took Arsenal by surprise. Victor Moses was exquisite in the game. And Arsenal struggled to deal with their, their physicality. Something that maybe Chelsea might want to employ. I expect Drogba to play on Saturday against Arsenal. He's got a formidable record against them. If Chelsea want to get into the top four, arguably, that's their main priority, if you listen to Roberto Di Matteo, then they need to win that game at the Emirates. <laughs>